Hi everybody, it's Kesh, and this is a quickie because several people asked me after the video I did about the solar eclipse, that was last time, I'll put a link to it down below uh, if you didn't see that. Many, many people said that was amazing and uplifting and so on, but they added, would you please do the conjunction that's happening on April 20th? Apparently, conjunction is when two major planets come very close to each other in the sky, and this gets uh, astrologers very, very excited, apparently. And so, this is a conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus. See, I did my research, and uh, I have no idea what that really means, but it does seem that it's a very, very important powerhouse for change. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, also, I was asked by several people if I would do the transition pictures for O.J. Simpson, who died very, very recently of prostate cancer. He was 76 years old. Now, people who regularly watch the channel know that I don't do transition pictures for people who've just died. Even if they are despised in the public arena, privately, somebody loves them somebody cares somebody's grieving and i don't want to be the guy who uh, steps on those kind of toes but uh i thought i could do his crossover which is basically a transition but with none of the emotion none of the depth it just gives you some idea what he went through when he crossed over um, I didn't know very much about him, it won't surprise you to learn. I did see him in the Naked Gun movies, but he was an actor, sort of. He was a sports commentator, but he really made his mark as a footballer. Uh, do you know, he didn't know that his name was Orenthal until he was aged eight. And when a teacher at school told him, everybody called him OJ from the day he was born and he only found out later that he was called Orenthal. Also, another interesting fact, his father was a drag queen. I didn't know that. But uh, anyway, he had been in a lot of trouble when he was very young, apparently. He came from a very poor household and uh, was put in jail or detention when he was in his teens. I think he was arrested like three times, all kinds of different problems. He was a very difficult person. Uh, and once again, he made the headlines in the 1990s for murder. He was acquitted, as we all know but he was held civilly liable for a vast amount of money uh, that he had to pay compensation. I think he only paid a fraction of it, then died. And I don't know whether they'll be able to claim the money from the estate. He also went to prison. He was sentenced to 33 years for kidnapping and uh, like armed robbery or something. He's trying to get his Heisman trophy back from a, a guy in Vegas, as I recall. But he died 76 years old, and uh, I thought I would take a look at his crossover. And when I did, if you imagine there was like an atrium, a globe-shaped, not maybe globe, but dome-shaped atrium, and he came crashing through it. All the glass fragmented everywhere. And at the bottom, there was a chute like affair to catch him. And he just shot into uh, the little tunnel that I always see, which means they cross over into death. But uh, he came in so suddenly, I don't think he believed that this would take him down. There was a sense of invincibility about him. I think once he was acquitted of the murders, uh, he felt that he was a Superman or something. And it was really cramped in there. Very, very small. The smallest one I've ever seen. And at one point, I thought he kind of tried to stand up and banged his head on the roof because it was a lot smaller than he was. And it was almost like, this shouldn't have happened to me. I'm going back. This is not the kind of thing I was expecting. Uh, but of course, there's no going back. You are, uh, you're stuck with it. And uh, he eventually squeezed out of that tiny space into the general cave that I see. And he was enormous. He was like Gulliver in Lilliput. Everything was small and he was enormous. So that when he stood up, he almost banged his head against the roof. Then suddenly, his giant figure, his giant Gulliver figure, snagged 
on the roof. It was rather like uh, a parade balloon on a float. He snagged against the roof and burst. And the giant figure collapsed to the floor and he was thrown out of it. He was on the inside and he was thrown out. And this was his first realization, it struck me, that he was a regular person with a regular set of circumstances for crossing over and that he was no different. He wasn't great. He wasn't a legend in the afterlife. Nobody is. Uh, that's a mortal thing. That's what happens in form. But this realization was shocking to him. So that must explain why he did what he did in life. He felt he was invincible. He felt he was Superman. But it was all based on insecurity and fear. And uh, now he had to face it for real. And I remember that he looked up the tunnel. This is the tunnel that leads to the light. But he said, my God, if this can happen to me here, what might happen to me there? And uh, there was a sense of real dread in him. So uh, I don't know what happened. I didn't follow it through because I think that's unethical. But the crossover to the point where his consciousness dwindled away, that was a real coming down to earth moment. Not just the shooting through the atrium, which is bad enough, this idea that he could get ill and die, uh, that he couldn't cheat that, uh, but then realizing that um, the big figure that he was in his own head was uh, an illusion. It was all illusory. And he uh, collapsed and the real OJ fell out and was very, very small. Now we get to the conjunction between Uranus and Jupiter on April 20th. If you haven't seen the eclipse pictures, then you probably need to go back and look at that and see the kind of changes that were coming, that were heralded by that. But many of you said it's very likely that this conjunction on the 20th could amplify that or be an addition to it or be part of it. I don't know what. So what I did was I uh, went into the, I couldn't really do a conjunction. It's one of those things that is not for me to do. I don't know how I would get pictures for that. But what I did do is I went into the energy of April 20th. And I know the impact of it is felt over many, many months afterwards and maybe even up to a couple of years. But uh, I thought maybe there's energy for April the 20th that's different to other days. So that's what I did. Not really expecting very much, to be perfectly frank with you. But um, when I went into that energy... I got the weirdest pictures. If you can imagine doll furniture, tiny little pieces of doll furniture arranged on a toy lawn, right? So there's a lawn that's scattered with doll furniture. It's not in any particular order. It's just tables and chairs all uh, spread around. And then maybe you are a little doll sitting in the chair. But what happened was that as I sat in one of those little doll chairs on the toy lawn, I saw coming towards me a real person. Again, it was like Gulliver and uh, Lilliput, but a gigantic real person. And this person was carrying a plank of wood, a two by four, lugging it over towards me and laid it on the ground on its edge and began to push. You know when builders lay concrete, like a concrete path, and they will get a piece of wood and they'll pull it across the path in order to make the concrete flat and even. It felt like that. This person was pushing this enormous plank of wood across the ground, sweeping up all the doll furniture, pushing it aside, causing it to form a huge heap. The old was being pushed aside, but it didn't seem to make way for the new. It was all about surrendering to this. It was all about not resisting it and just allowing this to take place. 
But of course, it seemed to cause disruption. It seemed to uh, set everybody on edge. It's like, why is this happening? What's going on? And the doll furniture and everything else was just piled up in a heap. There was only so far it could go. There was a wall over to my left. So this wasn't infinite. Everything got piled up in a little channel. And I can imagine people going in their own lives, whether this relates to their personal stuff or the world or politics or global affairs, whatever it is. I can imagine people going, wow, what's this going to lead to? Where's this taking us? The answer to that was not to worry about it, but to go along with it, to surrender as I said, and not resist, because resisting would cause emotional problems like anxiety and fear and worry and so on. The answer was to go, okay, we're in a time of change. We're in a time of great expansion and movement forward. And if we don't have some kind of disruption, even if it takes like two years to happen, then we're just going to stay in our rut. We're just going to stay as we are. And that's not the time we're living in. We're living in adventurous, bold, new times. And so that's what basically happened. And those who surrendered, and basically I surrendered to this, despite what was going on around me, uh, those who surrendered found they were being channeled, they were being directed, realigned towards a bridge there was a bridge now when bridges happen in the pictures it usually means a connection which is does in real life a connection between two things two places two ideas two locations in the world or whatever and i walked out across the bridge and this felt really strong like i'm leaving that behind over there and i'm moving towards this over here it was just a matter of following where i was being led that giant figure that i saw coming towards me with the two by four was uh, the universe basically symbolically saying okay i think we are ready for new adventures what do you say and in order to have that new adventure and allow ourselves to be realigned we had to face um, some kind of reckoning or some kind of new way or some kind of reassimilation to something obviously until it happens we don't know but it felt enlivening it felt fantastic it felt like we really were going places now i came away enthused by that quite remarkable the whole thing so i don't think this is a time of worry going forward. Uh, you can worry if you want, you can be anxious if you want, but this felt like a time of realizing that the new was upon us. I guess it could be AI, it could be new kind of communication, it could be, I don't know, Trump being uh, indicted and that changing the political sphere and landscape uh, it could be a lot of different things uh, i don't know but whatever it was the secret to getting through it was to go wow what's this going to lead to and embrace it and see where it takes us and uh, move forward rather than trying to cling to the status quo uh, by the time i got into the bridge i was invigorated and enthusiastic and uh, encouraged and uh, I think we all will be uh, if we can surrender and uh, if we can uh, submit to what comes rather than fighting the, uh, the thrust, the power, the dynamism of universal change and growth. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Bye bye.